Um, so uh, moving on to some of your different job roles, you've had uh, a number of jobs with similar titles and presumably similar responsibilities. So for our listeners, many of whom are attempting to find their career paths for the first time, can you tell me about some of the distinctions between security researcher, threat researcher, and threat analyst? Um, so, uh, I mean, largely it kind of depends on context of job, right? Okay. Um, you know, the first 10 years of my career, security research was more of a hobby. It's like, where are vulnerabilities and how to make things more secure? Okay. Uh, just at a higher level general thing of, of you know, say OWASP, right? Mm-hmm. Is a good security research outfit of let's figure out how to right. make web apps not suck because, yep. you know, I have enough work to do without yet another SQL injection vulnerability. Yes. Um, you know, threat research is what are the criminals doing? Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And how you can defend against that specifically versus, right, say, hardening research, uh, hardening infrastructure, though they feed into each other a little bit. It's, you know, some measure of my time is trying to get people actually arrested and convicted. It's mm-hmm. very rare because of the international limitations of law enforcement. Mm-hmm. But sometimes, you know, sometimes there's some success right there. Yeah. So, I mean, threat, threat analysis is, hey, I'm doing it inside of a company. What's coming after me? Threat research. I'm, I, you know, evil vendor land, right. Is just Mm -hmm. what are bad guys doing generally and what can I do to either put stuff into my product to protect my customers, or I I try to give, give a fair bit outwards also, because, Hey, you know, everybody's, there's lots of vendors out there, but at a certain point we need to protect broader society too. Mm -hmm. Um, So there's lots of my personal data and threat research that for instance, goes into quad nines. Uh, mm-hmm. to just provide free DNS filtering to anybody who points their DNS resolver at quad nines. Okay. Could I monetize? I, I do monetize it. Could I monetize it more? Sure. Yeah. But until we provide security for the 95% of the world that isn't protected by a sock, it's all kind of academic, you know, mm-hmm. once it gets in the enterprise environment, we see that in the work from home reality is if I compromise somebody who's a remote worker, I can pivot into uh, corporate infrastructure fairly easy. Hopefully mm-hmm. I'll detect it then, but you've already got a foothold. Yeah. Now, um, can you talk about how those job titles differ in their uh, responsibilities or more to the point, I guess, what, uh, what types of experience or preparation? If one of those three, like people say, you know, I really want to, I really want to learn, uh, you know, security, uh, security researcher or threat researcher, like how, how similar are the skill sets in those, in those three types of jobs and how sort of how fluid are people who can mm-hmm. sort of move between them? Or do you have to have sort of three, three buckets of, of knowledge? Um, I would I wouldn't say it's three buckets of knowledge. They kind of built into each other, right? Mm-hmm. Is you know, there's lots of people talking about you know your kind of security career path, um, and like I said, teaching it at, at a university, right? I, I deal with this with undergrads. Is you know, how do you go from point A to point B? And people talk about, okay, let's talk about threat intelligence. Could you do that as an entry level job? I mean, kinda. Mm-hmm. But you need the understanding uh, of how technology works, right? And and uh, to get an idea. Uh, same is true for for forensics, right? People, you know, I want to go into forensics, and there's a huge need for it, and it's very lucrative. Mm-hmm. And I could teach somebody how to use the Celebrite in a month or a, you know a week long class. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean they understand what's going on. It means they know how to use the tool. Yes, and that is kind of a fundamental problem with just generally of how we we structure our industry. We teach people on tools. So I would say if you want to be, I mean, you know, while there's a big gap of trained professionals, it almost doesn't matter. You can pick whatever path you want right. and have some baseline of skills and you could figure it out. Yeah. But to be truly successful, it's, you know, now doing, you know, threat intelligence work is like the security analysis and research I did 10, 15 years ago, you know, helps that because I understand, OK, mm-hmm. how Windows internals works and how network security works yep. and, you know, I might have to sit there and look at a cheat sheet, but I can figure out how packets are structured, you know, mm-hmm. and, you know, in uh, Wireshark or TCP, yeah. um, you know, and uh, there's a wide variety of other things like not in threat intelligence work. It's actually kind of understanding some of the processes of how intelligence analyst analysis works in the intelligence community mm-hmm. and some of the geopolitical realities that go into why we're seeing certain type of cyber attacks and that ebb and a flow and economics and philosophy, right? Yep. So yep. I've, I've gotten more philosophical as of half a degree in a master's in theology that I've never finished, right? Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. People sit there and say, hey, why can't we fix things in security? Well, the fundamental problem in cybersecurity is it's not a technical problem. 
Mm -hmm. People have been killing and stealing since the dawn of our recorded history. Mm -hmm. We just can do it at greater distance and scale with technology. Mm -hmm. I can try to mitigate it and minimize it, hopefully create some things that could detect problems. But I can't stop the criminal problem, right? Because yeah. it's, you know, it's depressing to say it's inherent in our nature, but it's kind of inherent in our nature, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So um, the way we architect our tech stack, you know, really just lends itself to lots of criminality. Yeah. So it's, you know, people get to burnout in security when they get mid-career and they realize is we're not really solving problems. We're pushing bits around. We might, mm -hmm. we might minimize some risks here or there, but fundamentally, I don't think anything's really changed in 30 years except the scale of the problem, the dollars lost. And yeah. now, instead of in the 90s, we talked about the dystopian where you can kill people with hacking. Mm -hmm. We're here today. You kick over a yeah. hospital with ransomware yep. and all of a sudden, you know, people can't arrange life-saving care at the speed with which to uh, is necessary to sustain life. Yes. Or self-driving cars that can be manipulated to drive mm -hmm. over pedestrians because mm -hmm. it thinks it's a crosswalk. Right. You know, we're we're building the dystopian future that we all talked about in the 90s in hacker magazines. And yeah. apparently nobody thought to say, hey, we saw this 20 years ago, how to stop this in the 90s. Mm -hmm. Now we're just in a world where we've got to minimize risk, which is a nice insurance euphemism for keeping the death and mayhem to financially acceptable levels. Yeah, yeah, right, right, very said. I don't write to predict the future. I write to prevent the future. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the future happens enough. anyway. Is, is, yeah, is, exactly. Know, the future I, comes I whether you want it or not. I stand upon the shoulders if history is saying stop, and they're still marching on anyway. I'm excited to announce that our InfoSec Skills platform will be releasing a new challenge every month with three hands-on labs to put your cyber skills to the test. Each month, you'll build new skills ranging from secure coding to penetration testing to advanced persistent threats and everything in between. Plus, we're giving away more than $1,000 worth of prizes each month. Go to infosecinstitute.com challenge and start your challenge right now.